I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, a special regional celebration celebrates 50 years this year, the Carthage Maple Leaf Festival. Today we're going to find out about this special anniversary with Janine Poe, who's the chairperson of the Maple Leaf. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. And we've talked about Maple Leaf in the past, but this is really 50 years. It's quite a momentous occasion for you to be able to have that. I think it is just a tremendous celebration to show how the community has stayed strong in creating this event for 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, to me that means that it's being passed down from generation to generation and that the fire and the spark of Maple Leaf is just continuing to grow. You know, a lot of communities may have festivals so that have that kind of history of keeping it continuously is quite an accomplishment. Yes. Someone who's watching may not be familiar with, well, how did this start 50 years ago? Where do we come from? Well, it actually started in 1966 mm -hmm. um, with the band festival through the high school. The band director um, wanted to have a band festival at Cahey Baker Stadium. And from there, he thought, you know what? The bands need to march a little bit in a parade. And so they had a really small parade that first year that we have found actually went the opposite direction on the square than what the parade does now. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a few blocks long. And the citizens of Carthage enjoyed that so much that they got together and they planned the first Maple Leaf Festival or first parade in right. 1967. So then from there it grew into more than just a parade. Yes, absolutely. The first, in 1967, I believe that the parade entries were 67. Mm -hmm. um, last year we had approximately 190 entries. So it tells how much it has grown in that time. And when we talk about Maple Leaf, we're not just talking about one day, one event. I mean, I have a brochure that I picked up. <laughs> You're talking about the whole month of October, basically. It basically <laughs> takes up the whole month of October, absolutely. Um, you know, the focus is on the parade day, which is always the third Saturday in October. Mm -hmm. um, but but strong events start the week before, and then we have other activities like the Powers Museum exhibit that start the first of the month and they go throughout. Now for someone who's not from the area and they're watching, and they may ask, well, where does the maple leaf come in? Little history of that tie with Carthage. Come to Carthage in the fall and see all the beautiful maple trees, mm -hmm. um, especially down Grand, but throughout the town, it seems like when the town was being built, it was you know, it was, adorned, it was adorned <laughs> with trees, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a beautiful, especially down Grand with the antique, you know, historic mm -hmm. homes and stuff that we have. So. so it really fits into the fall, the color at the time of the Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Every year people are saying, are the leaves changing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I usually start, you know, two or three weeks before the parade watching um, the trees down Grand and, mm -hmm. you know, are they going to change in time? Are they going to change too soon? Um, you know, you never know. It's okay. completely unpredictable, but it's always beautiful whether they've completely changed changed or they've just barely started changing for us. So this year we're hoping that fall will be a traditional fall with beautiful weather. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I know that um, when I looked through the booklet, it looked like there's a lot of support for this. So the organization, people might be curious, how is this organized? You're the chairperson. Must be a lot of other people helping you make this happen. Oh, absolutely. We are sponsored through the Carthage Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. um, and they kind of, you know, host and have the employees that do the back support of all of this, but we are made up of a committee of volunteers, let's say an average 20 to 25 people okay. um, that chair the different events mm -hmm. and they take care of their own individual event. And then we have others that just contribute ideas and are worker bees that make it all happen. So definitely a community support system all the way through. A lot of people have been working, have a history of helping out. You have a good, strong support oh, of people's experience. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tying that together. Well, this year's event, uh, we were talking about starting the beginning of the month. Um, we, we, this program's airing kind of toward the middle of October, but you mentioned the, Car the, the Powers Museum. Tell me about what they have to offer this year. They are doing a 50 years of memories, a look back on the Maple Leaf Festival. Um, they typically pull in a quilt show this time of year, but mm -hmm. they decided that with it being the 50th year, they really wanted to focus on the materials that they had that showed the history of this event. And so they're gonna be pulling out their scrapbooks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they're gonna have that open October 4th and it's gonna run through the 29th. Right, so the exhibits go into the museum and you can see firsthand how things have changed over the years. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you are also preparing, I understand, a book to help capture the history of the festival. Yeah, when we uh, realized that the 50th year was coming upon us, we actually, um, gathered some citizens and had a special committee for the 50th year. Mm -hmm. And one of the ideas that came out of those meetings was a history book. Um, so it's gonna be your traditional coffee table book, hardback, full color. Uh, when we started planning and, and thinking about it, we thought it would be about 100 pages. Mm -hmm. um, our 100 page book is quickly turned into 200 pages. 
and it's pictures. It's not. Oh, it's, it's not, not long narrative. No, <laughs> it is pictures of the history of how things have started. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it came through the large committee, but then we, of course, broke into a smaller committee of volunteers. We've asked for pictures to be submitted by um, our community, and we've, you know, scanned those so we could use them in the book. And it's just, it's amazing to see how the crowds have changed along Grand. Mm -hmm. um, but then to, you know, look back and see the, the older style, like the pageants and the, the gowns and the long gloves and stuff. So it's been really neat working on that project and seeing it come together. So really the citizens contributed to this book. Absolutely. Their family photos, perhaps, they were donating to you. Yes, absolutely. They're, they're precious memories. And, you know, we have some photo albums that, I mean, they brought in the photo album in, in full. Mm. And they said, you know, please take good care oh, of yeah, this. This is and, my family collection. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. So when you take those to the scanner, you're mm -hmm. definitely very careful with you know the the brittle pages i mean that's just the best way 50 when you years think of 50 years yeah um but to see that you know people have hung on to those memories for mm -hmm. so long and and being able to put them in the book and and give proper credit uh, to the, the rich history of the festival. It sounds like this takes it beyond the official history of maybe um, a collection that you might have, the chamber and the newspaper might be printing, but these are family mementos and that personal side of yes, things. Yes, yeah, and yeah. we've had, you know, we have had volunteers that have gone to like Jasper County Records Center mm -hmm. and the Carthage Public Library to pull information, but I think some of the best pictures that we've had have been those community members that said, oh, I've got some pictures that I wanna share. Great. So Now someone who's watching might be saying, well, well, when's this book coming out? How can we get it? We are out. going to have a draft copy that can be seen on October 15th mm -hmm. uh, at the Palms Massage and Day Spa, which is on the square. Um, that's where our volunteers can be housed. Mm -hmm. So that kind of worked out well. But we'll be showing um, a DVD that we'll talk a little right. bit more about here in a second. And then we'll have that draft copy of the book that they can look and see what our vision is. Um, and then they can pre-order that book. And mm -hmm. our delivery deadline is going to be middle of December. So people can have it by Christmas. Christmas. But we wanted to wait to go to final print so we could put this year's pictures in there as well. So tell the whole 50 years by showing photos from yes, this year. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and if someone is watching and they say, oh, I've got pictures back from 1970 when I marched in the parade, mm -hmm. we will still take those until November 1st. Okay. Um, so just because we've been working on it and we have that draft copy done does not mean that we cannot add more pictures. In fact, we have we feel like our 70s and 80s are a little low on pictures. Okay. So those are the so, decades to look in those photos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If someone has you know something for those, we would love to still see those so come in. Contact the Carthage Chamber. That's yes, the best way to reach. Yes, absolutely. Out. Yes. Okay. Now you mentioned a DVD, so you've got the the pictures in a book, but you're also going to have the video part of the story as well. Yes, I'm really excited about the DVD. Um, Missouri Southern's PR SSA department mm -hmm. has uh, given us a couple of interns to work with us, and they've done a ton of research. Um, to help us pull this together. And then they are also doing interviews with former Grand Marshals and mm -hmm. other people that have been involved with Maple Leaf for years and years. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're gonna hear that interview and their voice, part of the video, I'm sure, but then you know their voice over as we show the pictures that are gonna be in the book. And we plan on selling that along with the book. It's been a supplement to the book. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, something I noticed while looking through your booklet, it mentions a forever flag. So explain to me what that means. Okay. This is uh, the Festival Forever Flag. Yes, um, and again, that came out of planning for the 50th year. Mm -hmm. And um, give credit to Virginia Terry, who used to uh, work at the Chamber of Commerce office. And she said, you know, I think it'd be really neat if we had had a flag that is not yeared so people can you know put it out every festival so people every who have year. garden flags and things they can still yes mm -hmm. yeah so where our logo for this year has 50 years on it the forever flag does not uh, we submitted to the community for art submissions mm -hmm. and tom jones who's a local artist his uh, submission was chosen and you can see images of the flag on our facebook page and those can still be ordered um, just probably not guaranteed delivery by At the this festival point, this year. Order, right. But since it's not yeared, it can mm -hmm. go for you know next year's festival and so on. So we've got uh, three different size flags that they can order. Mm -hmm. 
And again, it just represents the beautiful um, town with the colors and stuff that we have during the fall. So your goal is to have people to be able to have these at their homes, to fly them yes. out in their yards. Yeah, homes and businesses, businesses and stuff, you know, to see the, the city blanketed with the flags. Great. Well, also we're talking, I know we have some pictures that you brought in as well. I'd like to, you know, let's see some of the visuals to kind of let people picture what we're talking about when okay, we talk about absolutely. Maple Leaf. So it uh, looks like this is part of a parade. Yes, this is at, actually at Centennial and Grand, and it shows... Um, I believe that is the marching cobras coming towards and making that final turn to the the stadium. And we'll be talking a little bit about them, but they are a major draw. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We would be that. disappointed if they couldn't make it to us. So bands being a big draw, and of course, it looks like fun here. <laughs> yeah, this is the Fair Acres uh, Y Color Run. Mm -hmm. They do a 5K, 10K, and then last year they added the Color Run for the first time, and that's always a big draw of you know coming out multicolored right. at the end of the the run. So a lot of different ways to participate and of course the courthouse with the cars. Yeah, this is actually cruise night. So mm -hmm. this is on Friday night um, and we invite, you know, the cars to come up on the square and, and what I think really gives it that old fashioned feel with the older cars and stuff up there. Now this year I know the courthouse is undergoing some renovation. Are they shooting to have the exterior finished for you in time? Yes, <laughs> yes, it will be done. <laughs> right, right. Okay, moving on to, uh, looks like this is the our dog dogs show? in the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, the dog show is a long-standing tradition for as long as I can remember, and we have it in Central Park on the Sunday before the parade. So okay. this year it's on the ninth, um, and people come and they bring their dogs to be judged in several different categories. Uh, usually most talented, most look like the owner, you mm -hmm. know, fun categories like that. Do they need to pre-register for that type of thing? You no, they can register oh, the day after that, that one. Okay, mm -hmm. so with people and pets and... And there's actually the image mm -hmm. of the forever flag that oh, we okay. just talked about. Great, so. great. So that's an idea if people would like to have that flag, what it would look like for yes. them, tying that together. So, and we have... Betty Bell, mm -hmm. she is this year's Grand Marshal. Okay. Um, and again, for our Grand Marshal, we ask for nominations from the committee from the community mm -hmm. that send those in and then the committee votes you know on those and she is a former school teacher so she's very well known she's been very active in stone's throw theater for many many years and just loved by many in the community so that's mary Jo little with the chamber mm -hmm. giving her the the news that she has been selected. Looks like she's very happy at that yes. moment. Yes. <laughs> Probably has touched a lot of lives as a teacher. She a lot of has, people that have lived in Carthage have gone through school and have known her for yes. the years pitching that. So Grand Marshal's a big part every year and of course you have pageants every year. Yeah and this is from last year's pageant and Allison Peterson is um, the one in the white and mm -hmm. she was our queen and the other two are her court. Um, so they always um, place first and second okay. as well mm -hmm. and they are expected to attend several of the events throughout the week as royalty and um, be seen in the community so They're of course of the, they ride in the parade right so. they'll be in the car doing the wave <laughs> yes and absolutely yeah <laughs> but you have more than just the queen pageant i know i'm looking at your book it, there's a pageant seem like for every age we, we started infant uh, for the pageants and then go all the way up to queen um this year again because of it being the 50th year we have added a mr and mrs charity pageant oh. mm -hmm. um so if you're over the age of 18 and you cannot you know c compete for queen you can raise some money for a local charity of your choice that supports the Carthage community, and that will be the true pity per vote. So whoever uh, raises, raises the most the for their charity <laughs> will be elected Mr. and Mrs. Maple Leaf, and they don't, don't have to be couples. Mm -hmm. So um, it can be, you know, individuals that go for that. A lot of opportunities, and those, I imagine, require any of the pageants, pre-registration, there's a system, I and mean, when you yes. look in the book, you have certain dates to apply and things yes, like that. Yes, and, and the deadline for most all of those is September 30th, so okay. it, we will be airing we'll be after airing that. After those actual <laughs> yeah. Now we're showing the website address on the screen for people, uh, I imagine that's really where you have a lot of information for people. As we're going along, if somebody says, what was that, they can find it on that website. Absolutely, yes, and we keep that very updated. Um, it's a really neat website in that if you're curious if there's Something going on a particular day you can click on that day say mm -hmm. uh, Saturday October 8th and you can find all of the events that are going on um, 
so you don't miss anything at all. Great. So day by day, and it tells you where and what's happening. Uh, some people might be curious as far as uh, costs. A lot of these things look like they might be even free events that people can attend. Most of the events are free. There mm -hmm. are a few things like the Marching Cobras when they mm -hmm. perform on Saturday afternoon, that there's a small admission fee that can be paid at the door. Um, that is to really offset the costs that we pay, you know, to bring them in right. and stuff like that. So we try to keep everything very affordable mm -hmm. for So that. affordable, family fun type of Yes. Event. So yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the different activities that you have. I mentioned that there's a lot. We're not going to be able to go through everything that you have on the calendar, <laughs> but you know, some of the highlights uh, that you, you know, people ask you, what are some of the key things that stand out for you as you're looking at the month? Well, you know, we've really covered a lot of the events, you know, kind of leading up to it as far as the pageants and stuff. Um, the week prior to, we have starting on, I believe it is Tuesday evening. Uh, there will be a movie night, again, sponsored by Missouri Southern mm -hmm. State University. Uh, they're showing Shrek this year, and that is held at Forest Park Baptist Church. Um, and so there's two different showings on that, and that is free. Free, open to the public. Free, come open to the, to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, which I think is a lot of fun and, an, and a neat twist to things. Good kids and, movie for the for bringing kids. Yes, absolutely. And then on Wednesday, we have the Gospel Sing. And in doing the research for the book, I think the Gospel Sing has been going on probably as long as the festival oh, wow. itself. <laughs> okay. So um, that is, you know, neat to see the local churches come together mm -hmm. and um, celebrate our community through song is basically what they do and it is a beautiful time to, those are volunteer to singers volunteer choirs people say yes. we're going to give our time and to yeah to together. come in out to come out and celebrate basically mm -hmm. is what they're doing and then on thursday night we have the wonderful three minutes of fame which is a lip sync contest um, it is free to participate in that and then i believe it is a dollar admission uh, to go and watch that mm -hmm. um, and you have different age divisions, children and adult, and they get together and they do their best lip sync, and it is always very entertaining. <laughs> they choose the song they're going to sing to? <laughs> they choose the song they're going to sing to, and some of them really get dressed up in character, and, and they have a lot of fun with it. And where's that held at? That is held at the high at, sorry, at the school auditorium. School auditorium. Okay, yeah. great. So that's so. A, the fun continues, different types of music, different activities, different nights. Yes, so yes. And then that kind of leads us into Friday, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Brats on the Square, hosted by our Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. We have the cruise night that evening where the cars can come into the square. And then this year on Friday evening from Central Park, we are gonna have fireworks for the first time. So uh, we are hoping that our photography enthusiast can get placed where they can get a picture of the fireworks behind the courthouse or around the courthouse, however that would be. Um, but then also for our community, there's gonna be many viewing spots because mm -hmm. most of them are gonna be aerial. Oh, good. So you don't have to worry about getting close to the park because mm -hmm. we are going to have them in the air to kind of uh, light up the evening sky. So you don't have to worry about the trees being in the way to be able to Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, and then we have a carnival coming in um, that will be at Fair Acres Park mm -hmm. and that will be set up on Wednesday and run through Saturday. Um, so again, lots of activities for all ages, you know, to kind of go through. And then Saturday, of course, we start the morning with pancake feed at the fire department. Right leading into the parade, into vendors on the square, Marching Cobra is just a full day of full events. Full day of activity. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about starting early with the pancake feed. You know, the community's out there early when you look at what's happening that morning. <laughs> Nobody's sleeping in. No, <laughs> no. Um, you know, before I was Maple Leaf chairperson, um, our family usually started about 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, we start a little earlier now because I drag them along with me. Um, but yeah, the whole community is out early. You know, if you've got a float in the parade, you've got mm -hmm. to be there early to get in line. And so it is a full day of activity. Well, let's talk about the parade this year. Um, 50th anniversary, sounds like you have a lot of bands. Any other special approaches with the parade and how you're presenting it this year? You know, um, we, we've we reached out to different um, areas asking for them to participate. Mm -hmm. We don't have all of our parade There's entries in yet. Still a time people are registering. So right? there, could, there could still be some neat um, entries that come in. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be you know holding for that. We will have the marching cobras. And we would be disappointed if we didn't have them every year. And I think the crowd would be disappointed with this. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to have maybe some Clydesdales join us. Mm -hmm. And um, the Chamber of Commerce will have their first float in the parade mm -hmm. this year. So, um, and they're, you know, small staffed, so it's definitely volunteers that's making that happen making for them, but it's very exciting as well. So. Now, when we're talking a parade for somebody who may not be familiar, we're not talking about a short parade. 
It's a good <laughs> presentation. It, well, the, the path is two miles long. Mm -hmm. um, so from when you enter the square at 4th and Main, and then you make it down to K.E. Baker Stadium, my guess to walk that or drive that very slow, right. <laughs> slow path is probably about 90 minutes. Um, I know from watching it on the square from start to finish, it's usually about two hours. So those bands that are coming, they're putting in a lot of practice time. Their students are getting in shape. They know they've got a good day of workout. Yes, yeah. Um, and, you know, they either love it or they dread it, <laughs> I think. Um, if the weather is good, I think they always enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, but there has been a few rainy parades, right. so I'm sure that's miserable when you're marching. <laughs> But for the area high schools and the college and people who come and march in that parade, there's more than just marching in the parade, especially for the high schools. Well, yes, because they then go on to K.E. Baker Stadium, and that is where they compete in the band competition that mm -hmm. actually started all of this for us. Right. So they have a you know, full day ahead of different divisions competing and stuff. And um, their award ceremony can wrap up usually at you know, anywhere from 10 p.m. to midnight, just depending on how many bands participate. So they can have a long day with a lot of yes, music. If yes. anyone is a music lover, they have a lot of choices <laughs> yes. to listen to at that yeah. point. Now, you mentioned the Friday night uh, uh, cars on the square. You also have a car show going on during the daytime on Saturday as well. We do, and that is out at the CMC complex. Mm -hmm. um, and. Oh my goodness, I'd hate to even guess on how many cars actually show up um, out there, but it is, the whole complex is just filled, you People know. from around the region bring their cars in. Yes, right? yeah, and some people will come in town just for the car show. They don't, you know, they, won't care, they don't the care to watch the parade. They <laughs> want to be there for the car show, so, and I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably one of the largest car shows in the area. So if somebody's so. watching and they want to see the car show, is there any cost to come watch or I mean, look at the cars? No, that is free to the public to yeah. walk through and look at all the different cars. Now, if you have a car you want to bring, there's probably a registration process. Yes, there is. And again, that would be listed on the website, and mm -hmm. I would hate to, to quote prices right. and get that wrong. But like most car shows, there's different categories, there's different opportunities. Absolutely, yes. So, so that could be a family day in itself, just watching and looking at the cars. Do you have food and vendors and other things there for they them do well? have food and vendors and they have um, I call the inflatables for the kids mm -hmm. so they do have a lot to going on out there as well. Great. I noticed in your book you also have an antique tractor show. Yeah and that is actually at Central Park mm -hmm. um, and they bring in it, it's actually really cool to see some of the old tractors right. and people you know, restore especially these. when you know what we have now you mm -hmm. know the modern tractors versus what they had to use so yeah. Now, when I've looked at their book, I also noticed there's a lot of ties to art, uh, arts and crafts. The, of course, we mentioned the music, but the arts and the fa that part of the festival, people being creative. Well, you know, on Saturday, we do have our crafters that set up around the inside of the square, mm -hmm. um, and we do ask those to be handmade crafts. Um, so that's just a small taste of what comes in, because we also have local artists uh, that will participate in the plein air event and they can be seen during the week, mm -hmm. you know, out. Leading up to the Saturday yes, event. Yes, yes. Right? Um, mm -hmm. And painting different, you know, beautiful sites in Carthage in the homes with the leaves and stuff like that. So what, the lot of, like I said, a lot of planning going into this. What have you enjoyed the most? I mean, you've been a chairperson for a few years, but knowing that this was the big 50th anniversary. Um, honestly, I probably enjoy the history project. Um, mm -hmm. And that is not my area of uh, enjoyment, typically. Um, in school, I always enjoyed math. So to say that I enjoyed history, <laughs> you know. Um, but digging in and learning about the festival and how rich it is in community involvement mm -hmm. um, has just really been touching. Um, I've been humbled to, to be a part of that and actually see it all come together. And of course, we're talking Carthage, but you're really impacting the region. We hear a lot about regional tourism, for instance, that you're bringing <laughs> people into the region. And that is what, you know, we, we love to do. I mean, um, we love to show off our city, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way right. to put that. We have a lot to offer and to know that we can attract people from the area to come in and, and see what we have fallen in love with and share it with them is really neat. Do you get a feel from year to year as far as people who may be putting this on their calendar and driving in for the event? They're not just regional visitors, that they're making you know, special I, trips? I actually, I talked to a, a lady that grew up in Carthage. Um, she has since moved to California, and she plans her trip home around the Maple Leaf Festival. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that kind of, you know, shows you um, what it means to several, you know, of the community and stuff to be able to come back, mm -hmm. um, and that they want to come back that time of year. Mm. 
And the, the generational aspect of 50 years must be a special tie as well, that you're seeing people, maybe the grandparents cheering it with their children and their grandchildren that, you know. Just yes, over this um, uh, rich in tradition is mm -hmm. really, you know, a good way to describe that. Uh, and I think, you know, grandparents getting to see their ki grandkids watch that f and have that feel of the bands coming down grand and stuff for the first time is always really exciting. Right. Well, the attendance and crowds, the people maybe who haven't been there wondering what about parking? You have a well-organized pl plan for how to get people <laughs> parked and be able to see what you have going on? Well, I will, I will tell you to come early mm -hmm. because you will probably, depending on where you decide to view the parade from mm -hmm. on that Saturday, you will probably have to walk a few blocks to get there, but there is plenty of parking. You just, it's not all real close. <laughs> but you do have the website, which we showed earlier. Yes, that absolutely. That will give people mm -hmm. information, show them the parade route, show them what's going on more in detail. Yes. Tie yeah. it together. Now, I, you mentioned, oh, you also have a Facebook page. Tell me a little bit about that. We do, and um, Carthage Maple Leaf Festival, um, and we try to keep that updated and posted with the newest information. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the younger generation uses Facebook way more than, yeah, is, <laughs> than websites or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, and I might add that we had a young, well, actually last year's queen, Allison Peterson, came to us and she said that she thought that we needed a geo filter for Snapchat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Many did not know or understand what that was when she brought it to the committee meeting, um, but she has created a geo filter for us, and that will be available that day for our Snapchat users. Okay. So we really are trying to bring new into their traditional mm -hmm. festival and, and keep it current and stuff so for everyone. Social media playing a continuing role. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <everything together>. yeah. <laughs> so, so if somebody tuned in a little bit late, they have questions, um, let's give them the website and maybe a phone number, how they can reach you. CarthageMapleLeaf.com, mm -hmm. and they can be uh, call the Carthage Chamber, and that phone number is 417-358-2373. Okay. And the main, we said throughout the month of October, but the main weekend of the parade is the third weekend of October. Correct, okay. which is um, October 15th. And so, like I said, le starting October 8th, leading up to the 15th is when the activities really start getting strong. Great. Well, what what are your main goals for this year? Fifty years. I'm sure that's you know a special year. But as chairperson, what would you like to be able to say? You know, at the end of October when the books are closed and you've wrapped everything up this year. Um, probably that we had the largest number of entries ever, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that we um, went off without a hitch and we had no rain. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the show goes on, rain or shine. Unless it is lightning, mm -hmm. the parade will go on. Yes, right. they've only had to call the parade one year because of weather, and it was because it was actually a thunderstorm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we whether if rain or shine, we go on, just no lightning. Right. And a lot of your <laughs> events are indoors with some of the music events and art shows and so forth. So Correct. There are opportunities for people to come and see. Yes. Great. Well, Janine, I'd like to thank you very much for visiting, sharing some information with our audience. Thank today. you for having me. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us this week on Newsmakers as we look ahead to the Carthage Maple Leaf Festival, the 50th anniversary. And I hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.